Hey, well, hello everybody. I uh, hope you're doing well. I thought I'd do a little video today to share with you what I do when I finish a plein air painting um, outdoors. I, I often bring them inside to touch them up. Uh, you know, I think plein air painting is a, a great way to um, improve your skills. It's a great way to um, observe nature. It makes you a better painter, but because you're dealing with all the elements and because you have to paint so rapidly because the light is switching, you don't always get a finished piece of work. And that's really the goal is to get a finished piece of art. Um, sometimes they're just sketches and that's all they are. Sometimes you hit home runs and they're, they're great paintings. They're some of my favorite and they need very little touching up. But most of the time there's somewhere in between where there's some really nice strengths to a painting and there's also some weaknesses to it. So I'm gonna share with you today uh, a painting I did in Italy um, out in Tuscany about some of the strengths I see in it and some of the things I'm going to try to rework it and make it a little bit better. Let's go. All right, here's a painting I did when I was in Tuscany. This is of a Tuscan villa. Uh, it was early morning light, probably around 8.30, and that was the one thing I was trying to capture was the morning light as it hit these olive groves, uh, as it hit the little villa here. And there are some nice points about it, and that is a strong sense of light coming through here. Um, some darks, some lights. You see some good shadows coming across the road here. Um, you got a decent composition kind of leading in um, and these nice Italian cypress trees add a little bit of variety. So there are some positives to this painting, but it, it's really struggling in some areas as well. And the primary one that sticks out to me the most is the sky. The sky is kind of one uniform color. There's not a lot of variety in it and I need to add a little more variety as I go from the horizon up to the zenith up here. Uh, and so I'm going to try to add um, some variety into this and add a little more life into it. Skies should not just be flat blue planes. Um, that looks really boring in painting. So if you're out there painting, uh, your sky should be a lot of interest. The whole painting should hold interest and the, the sky is a big part of this painting. So that needs to be worked on. I might play a little bit with this roof as well and, and um, see if I can get a little bit more highlight on it. And I'm gonna add some a little bit stronger highlights into these olive trees as I guide the eye in. That's one of the things I wanna do because right now they all kind of look the same. Um, and again, variety is the key to painting. You want to have a lot of variety, variety in color, variety in value, variety in texture. Uh, and so we'll see if I can pull that off today. Okay, one of the things I'm doing here is um, it just kind of using a pointillist technique where I'm just applying uh, some different color down here. Uh, you can set, kind of see in the camera a little darker blues ultramarine blue up on the top and i'm just going to kind of fade and blend those in um, and, and kind of show that strokes so you can kind of see the variety in the sky so it's not just this blue mass now one thing i was noticing when i was doing this is i'm going to i can start playing with these edges a little bit uh, each of these trees are are kind of all the same as well i noticed and this is what's good about going back into your paintings um, they all look like kind of soldiers just stuck up there straight. And so I'm going to add a little bit of variety in them. So I, I could come in and kind of make that one a little thinner. I might make a couple of these a little thicker, um, soften some of these edges on them, and just kind of add some more interest into it. And so I'm going to go and do that, and we'll see how that turns out. All right, so I mentioned a little earlier I was going to try to add some highlights into these. And, and you can see I'm kind of adding that here. That's a little too strong. And so I think one of the important things to do is when you're uh, retouching these paintings is to make sure you don't go overboard with your touch-ups. You want them to be subtle. And so I got to bring that back down. I'm going to kind of mix up that color again and kind of knock that highlight back uh, just a hair. Um, let's see here, softly, gently, just so that there's, looks a little bit more natural, but you can kind of still see it's there. Do something similar in a couple of these others up here. Kind of bring in those highlights there. And again, kind of knock them back. And knock that back a little bit here so it's not as strong and it's a little more subtle. All right, so I went in, uh, added a little highlights, some here. Um, I actually warmed that up a tad. I it had some variety in these cypress as well. I kind of grayed that one down. I kind of changed the shape and softened the edges around that one. I darkened this one a little bit. Um, that one's still coming. That edge is a little strong for me, so I'll probably play with that just a little bit, soften it here or there, just like I did. 
uh, added a little more warmth to the where the sun's hitting, darkened a couple of these values, and so just really played with the value scale overall. I think it's important not to do too much. Um, sometimes you can overpaint, and I don't want to overpaint. So what I'm going to do is stop now. I'll put it in a frame. I'll let it sit on the wall for two or three weeks, see if I still like it, see if there's anything that bothers me from it. But I think it's a little bit stronger one than what it was before. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I uh, hope it was helpful for you, and hope you have a good time painting.